Oh, hello friends, how's it going? How's it going? All right, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're here for the first time, I'm Francesco. I make music as Distilled Noise and if you're here, it's probably because you're interested in house music production or better, micro house music production and minimal house music production. In this video, we're gonna talk about a wide, so wide topic and I'm going to cover just a tiny bit. I just talk about few things that I know on how to achieve groove, especially in our uh, music genre. Genre? Uh, how do you pronounce it? Uh, anyway, at the beginning of the video we focus on swing. I want to try to explain a little bit how it works and then we'll cover all the Ableton groove pool, also how to achieve a groove with other little tricks that you can use for uh, making micro house music. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what is groove? Well, groove has a lot of meanings in music, but I think that most of all, it's a feeling. A feeling that is given by a repetitive and addictive beat that makes you move, makes people move. Even if you don't know what are the elements that make groove, you often happen to say, oh, this track is so groovy. So it's something that you feel inside. So now more technically, how do you create groove? How do you make a track groovy? In my opinion, there are at least three Three ingredients to the recipe. First one is intensity or velocity variation. So basically, you do you don't want your beats to have all the same intensity, but you want to humanize the way you play them. Second one, swing, and third one are all the side elements and the percussive sounds and the textures and other things that you add in the background and this is really specific for micro house i think that this makes your track richer and more interesting but first let's talk about swing hey this is me from the editing desk which is the same desk where we make music and where i shoot videos so nothing new anyway uh i just want to say that with this video i'm releasing a new free track you just listen to it if you watched my previous videos. It's on my Bandcamp and the link is on the description. Also, I remind you that I have a sample pack out, so if you wanna take a look, listen to the demo, and maybe consider buying it, all the links are down in the description. A lot of you guys told me that they are really happy about it, so make your choice. Okay, I'll never be able to shoot a video in a day, so back two days later. First, don't confuse the swing in electronic music with the swing tempo in jazz music. That's a different thing. It's something that you can do with a swing function, but swing in electronic music has a more, it's more in general, something that it's made to emulate real music. So the fact that music players don't always play straight to the grid. Now, how do you do swing in electronic music? So when you have a piano roll and you have to write down the notes on this piano roll, if you double click on the piano roll, they go straight they go straight to the grid. So you can decide to move that to move all of them one by one, uh, but that's a little bit time consuming or you can use the swing function. That function was first invented by Roger Lin, which is the creator of the MPC drums. So let's see how this thing works. Let's see what's the concept behind the swing function. Let's consider one 4-4 measure divided in fourth. We write down the beats on the grid on every fourth and at 120 BPMs it sounds like this. In electronic music, we usually have the grid divided in 16th, so we first divide it in 8th, and then every 8th in two parts, so we now have a 16th grid. A 4 bar loops with a 16th subdivision with no swing applied sounds like this. Now, how does swing work? 
It basically works moving forward the second sixteenth of every eighth group. In other words, if you consider a step sequencer, for example, like the one that you have on the Arturia Beatstep Pro, swing delays all the even number 16th bits of the sequencer. Or, if you look at the motion graphics on the screen, it moves forward the orange bits. The amount of swing is expressed by a percentage, so being 100% the length of an 8, when you have a 50% swing, it means that the first 16th is taking the same space as the second, so basically you have no swing, and it sounds like this. When the percentage starts to go over 50%, like this 55%, it means that you're now moving forward the second 16th beat. So basically you're applying a swing and now it starts to sound a little bit different. Let's hear it. Usually swing can be increased up to 75-76%, that to me is a bit, little bit too much, but let's hear it sounds like 63% for example. As you can hear, a 63% swing is pretty intense. If I'm using a 55% or less, it means that I don't want it to be, I don't want the swing to be too prominent. I just want it to affect the feeling. When I'm using a 66, 66% or 63 or 70, 70 it's pretty, it's pretty rare to be used. Anyway, I want it to change the rhythm of the track, so it's not a question, it's not about humanizing the tempo and the drums, but it's about changing the behavior and how the track sounds. So now let's move to Ableton, we'll see how the group pool works, what are the parameters that you can change, how I like to achieve groove by using swing, by adding all the side sounds that I talked about before, and yeah, so I think that I have some examples to show you, so let's jump into it. So let's see where are the grooves and swings on Ableton, you go to packs, core library, swing and grooves, here you have different kind of swing and grooves, but for this video I use the MPC grooves, so uh, first of all you have to you have the MPC 8 swing. I, I don't use those ones because they are thought for uh, an 8 subdivision of your beats. Um, so I go to the MPC 16 swing, those are thought for the, a 16th subdivision. Uh, then we have other kind of swings that we'll see later, but for the moment I want to show you those ones that are the classics from MPC. So then you can see that you have 53 up to 75, this is the swing amount, so we'll try to... Um, so this is the beat that I just broke down. It's just a hi-hat, so we'll see how the swing affects the sound and how it sounds. We'll uh, throw here a 53, uh, maybe here a 57. 66 here and a 73 here. So let's check this. So you can hear a slight difference between this uh, with the swing applied and without the swing. This is without, this is with. So the difference is really subtle and this is what I what I mean when you use in swing just to humanize a little bit your beats. Alright, so if I press commit, we can uh, if I press commit we can see what swing is doing with my beats. So if I go here, you can see that this is the, the grid position and the beat is moved a little bit forward. And if I zoom, you can see that you won't find a position in which the beat is perfectly aligned to a grid position because even here you see that it's slightly moved back from this 
position. So that's why swing is so handy because you don't have to do it by hand, but it's moving automatically all your um, all your beats a little bit forward. Then you can see that it's moving this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, and so on. So as we as we said before, it's moving always the second sixteenth of every eight group. So this is an eight group, this length, and it's moving the second sixteenth. Same here, and so on. So the classic MPC swings are always moving just this and this sixteenth. It's never moving these ones. And of course, the down beats are always aligned to the grid because that beat will be always aligned to the grid with every uh, swing that you want to use. The up beat, uh, in this case, it's always kept to the grid, to the grid position, but some uh, with other kind of grooves, uh, this one is moved as well. Another thing that you have to notice is that the velocities are all the same. So this MPC 16 swing is not affecting the velocity. Now let's go to this second one and let's press commit again. So let's hear it. So you can hear that this is a little bit more intense and if you if you take a look now we have that this beat is moved much forward than the previous one, right? So if you see, this is the grid position and this is where the beats go, is it went. And this in this case it went a little bit more forward. This is with the 57. Now let's see let's see what he does with the 66. 66 is the perfect swing we could call it because is the exact uh, amount of swing that a drummer usually uses when he's playing uh, the swing tempo. So, maybe they they do like that because they they don't play this one. All right, so they don't play this this beat anyway. Uh, so if I press commit, you can see that we are going more even more forward with the position of the beat um, compared to the grid position and finally we have the 73 which is a really extreme swing as you can see it's moving almost on the position of the 8th so let's hear how it sounds But this is handy for some some snare roll sometimes. Ta -ta 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 -ta. But if you make a track with this amount of swing, it can be a good track. But sometimes I think it can be a tiring track. It, it's hard to listen to a track which has all the time this big amount of swing. Let's start a new record. Now I want to show you what happens when you're using other types of swing. And now we throw in um, one of my favorite swings which is the 16 double down 70 and we will see what he does. Um, it does because it's not a person. So if you listen this is pretty much similar to the 66 swing. Now we change to the double down 70. So it's really similar, but you can hear some differences. So let's commit. Okay, now we're going to see first how this beat moved compared to the 66 to the 66 scene. If you if you look at the 66, you can see that which is more forward than the double down 70. Okay, second, let's look at the other. Uh, the second sixteenth, it's the same as, thi as this. Okay, here is the same as this. But the other thing that changes is this upbeat. So the eighth, it's moved forward a little bit forward as well. You see that it's not on the grid position. So what I said for the sixty-six for the 
16 swing, the classic MPC swing that this um, upbeat won't move, it's not the same with the 16 double down 70. Last but not least, let's take a look to the velocities and you see that they are not constant. So this swing is also affecting the velocity of the beat. So if you take a listen, you'll hear that all the beats are not the same intensity. It's like if the drummer doesn't play the, the hi-hat with the same intensity. And this is really cool because it's even more human. This is what gives groove to the track. In my opinion, if you don't combine swing with a variation on the velocity of the beats, you're not uh, completing the recipe for groove. So only swing, in my opinion, is not enough. So I want to show you another important feature on Ableton, which is this function, the velocity amount function. If you go to your drum rack, for example, but this is, you have this function for any instrument here. If you go to the drum rack and you select the sound that you're playing, for example, a hi-hat, um, here on controls you have this parameter, velocity, volume. So here you're deciding how much the velocity is affecting the volume. So at this point is 35%. If I go to 100%, so that's basically the difference between the minimum velocity, so minimum volume, and maximum velocity, so maximum volume. So I always keep it to like 45% because I don't want so much dynamic. If you have to 0%, it would be like having all those velocities constant because it's not affecting the volume. Um, you can also change those parameters to personalize the groove by yourself. Uh, so maybe you want to give more accent to one beat in particular. Uh, last but not least, we have another really cool thing, uh, which is the groove pool. So now let's take a look at the group pool. So in the group pool, I have all the swings that I imported in the project. Let's take a look at the parameters. So I have the double down 70 active and let's see what are the, the parameters that we can change. So the first one, it's base. Base, it's referred to the subdivision of your MIDI clip. So now I have it subdivided in 16th. So the, the swing to be applied will look at 16th notes. Anyway, the uh, default uh, settings is also written in the swing name. So MPC 16 means that the bass is set to, six, to 1 16th. Then we have quantize. So quantize means that if you're recording a MIDI clip live, maybe playing with a pod, you will, you will hardly uh, be able to uh, play the notes right on the grid or the beats right on the grid. So if you have quantize at 100%, it will move the beats to the grid and then it will, apl it will apply the swing. So if, for example, I, I re just recorded a mini clip, uh, a MIDI clip and the beats are moved in a wrong position, so not on the grid. If I have at 0%, the swing will start uh, working from this position. So, so it's sounding really bad. But if I put it at 100%, it will move those beats to the grid position and then apply the swing. So that's a feature that you would use if you're playing, if you're recording your clip, your clips live. Now, timing is the dry wet of your swing. So if you have it, if you have it at zero percent, no swing applied. It's totally uh, applying the swing. You can choose an intermediate level. Then you have random. Random is a parameter that is randomly changing the timing. So you can humanize even more your track by applying this parameter. So if you set it at 18%, for example, 
you you don't hear that but it's slightly changing the timing if you set it at a hundred percent is way too much let's hear it, it looks like you're having problems with your CDJ <laughs> so uh, I would not use that value and then you have the velocity so this is the same parameter that you have here the difference is that this one is only affecting this sound so the hi-hat on your drum rack in this case you're um, deciding how much the velocity uh, changes for all the sounds in your drum pattern in your midi clip so let's take a look if i have it at 35 percent and if I, and i press commit I'll see that my velocity is changing in this way. If I go back and then I set to to a hundred percent, I press commit. It's way more intense now. So so that's what velocity is doing. If I set to zero percent, I will have no velocity variation. Also, you can go down to uh, minus 100% and this is doing the opposite. I suggest to try to play with these parameters because you can find uh, funny effects. Also, try to experiment with swings. So mm, you have double down fifth double down you have double up you have funker then you have all these that are from other uh drum machines or other uh producers latin percussion swings um you just need to experiment afro jazz You can try a bunch of different things. So, experiment. So, after all this technical stuff, I think it's time to take a look at some examples so I can show you also the third ingredient of the Groove Recipe, which are the side sounds, textures, percussions, what I like to call the ghost sounds. And I think that in Micro House, those sounds are what define the genre and they really help to achieve a groovy sound so let's try to so i i i take a look at my projects and i'll see if i can find some interesting example so i will show you a project uh w where i use a really strong uh groove um i i think i use the double down 70 which is pretty strong and this is a track that is uh, included in my new EP, which I don't know when it will come out because I'm still looking for a label. Okay, this is a good example because I choose a loop. This is a loop that I treated a little bit. So you can see that I changed a lot of the volume of the parts. And this is really helping the groove of the track. You can apply a swing also to a audio track. Okay, so it will look for the transients and it will move forward from the grid those transients and also change the velocity. So here I applied the set the double down 70 and then I committed to see what it actually did. And I changed it a little bit the uh, the volume of some beats because they were too loud or too too soft it sounds like this and this is kept really in the back of the truck oops as you can hear it's just in the background This is without, this is with it. It's also taken from a vinyl record, so it has this crackling noise in the background. This is the part where I, where I applied the swing. This is without swing. Let's see with the kick. You 
see it's more suspended and jumping. Then I have all the textures, the bleep blobs. The micro delays, this is from another video tutorial that I did. So the baseline, and we have the pod. micro sounds those sounds are created from nowhere I mean I just recorded some some weird um, VST and cut some part stretch it you can do a lot of crazy sounds from nowhere and I love it I love snares so I'm I'm trying to use them a lot to create this kind of ghost notes You hear that? And this helps, this helps the groove because it's what a real drummer would do. Okay, in this one in particular, I have just one drum what just one drum rack for all the drum sounds, so it's easier to show you the difference between between swing and no swing. So here I applied a double up 55, don't ask me why, it was just sounding good. 55 means that it, the amount of swing is not that much. If I go to known, so no swing applied, it doesn't change that much. It's a little bit more jumping. Especially on the I use those sixteenth sounds. This one, this one. Okay, this one. I hear the difference. Then remember all this all this uh, intensity variation. If you take a look here, you can see that there are a lot of intensity variation. For example, you can see by the color. This one is pinker than, than this one. And that's because if you take a look at the velocity here, it's 44 and here it's 30. I did this by hand. I felt that some beat needed a, a more intensity. The second beat is harder. Then we have some particular sound in the background. I keep this sound through the, all the track. You may like it, you may not. Okay, then last but not least, I have this pattern. Okay, so with the drums, This is from the Electron. And then I applied a lot of moving filters. Look at this. So it keeps 
moving through the track. Maybe I'm going out of topic now, but I think the motion of sounds, changing filters, little differences in the filter cutoff throughout the track, that's what makes a uh, track uh, not boring. I think groove is the opposite of boring. Now it's just a hint of how to achieve groove. I prefer to explain the technical stuff in this video. You have the whole vision at the moment, right? Sorry. Okay, so um, so I still have to edit this video. I don't know how long it will be. I think it will be pretty long as all of my videos lately, uh, but I really hope that this give you an idea of how to achieve groove. You know, I can't cover everything. I, I'm not a music teacher, so there's a lot of things that I don't know. You know, the, the purpose of this channel is to learn together. Whew. Now that I finished editing the video, I can say for sure that it's really long. So if you made it to this point, I really appreciate it. Please consider giving a like to the video and subscribing to the channel. This will keep you updated on my next videos. And that's it. So make music, spread the love, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Ciao.